especially in a situation like what just happened this past weekend, there's a lot of empathy for a coach who loses a job over one game. You and Coach Golden were close there for a few <coughs> seconds after the game. Did, did it enter your mind this would be the last time? No, no, no. I, you know, just I'm happy in the moment for our team, and we won the game. And, and uh, he was very gracious. You know, just said you guys played flawless, and and uh, you know, good luck the rest of the way. And um, but uh, just like everybody else heard the news that whatever Monday or whenever that, whenever that was, and and uh, you know I hate it, but I, I mean that's just it's it's a sad state of affairs. It comes with the territory. Uh, you know, it's not like it used to be. Uh, you know, where you maybe evaluate the totality of a season and things like that just isn't that way anymore. I mean, social media gets people hired, fired, and retired uh, quick. I mean, just like that. Uh, that because it's just a, it's just a overwhelming uh, swell of emotion, uh, good, bad, or whatever. And you know, unless you got people with thick skin uh, in those in those decision making roles. Uh, Man, it's just – it happens all the time. I mean, how many coaches when, – when did you ever see this many coaches without jobs in the middle of a season? I mean, it's like it's like the trend now, and it's sad. Uh, but that's the way it is with the amount of money uh, that's involved and, and, you know, win right now, the expectations, uh, shoot first, ask questions later mentality that we got. It's just the way it is. And But I, I hate it. Um, you know, because these are people. Um, and, and I think every coach knows that when you get in this business, I mean, you're going to be criticized to the nth degree. Um, you're never going to make people happy. You're never going to please everybody. You better have some thick skin. You know you're only as good as your last win. Uh, you know, it's just the way it is. And, um, and, you know, try not to get too high. Try not to get too low. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, these are people. And Al Golden is is as good a person as there is in the business. He's a good man. He's a really good football coach. Uh, he's got a great family. And you just, you know, you hate to see things like that play out on a, on a big stage. There's a lot of people out there in the world who, who you know, their job doesn't work out, but, but they, don't have to, they don't have to live that out in front of the entire universe. Uh, but that just comes with it. So I, I feel for him and his family. Uh, but like I said, he's a heck of a coach. He'll land on his feet, and uh, for whatever reason, it didn't work. And uh, that's just the way it is. How do you improve on Saturday? How do I improve on, on last Saturday? How does the team improve on last Saturday? Oh, we got a lot we can improve on. I mean, you know, it's as I said, it's never as good as it seems. I mean, we made a lot of mistakes in the game. Uh, you know, we, we, we had our quarterback got pressured a couple times, even though we didn't give up the sacks. Uh, we didn't pick up a couple of twists like we needed to. Uh, you know, we missed a few plays uh, in the passing game that I thought we could have made uh, defensively. Uh, we we busted a couple times. We turned early in the game. They run a switch route, and 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 we 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 got one guy clamping, and it should have been a banjo. And and uh, you know, so we got mistakes uh, that can cost us. Uh, we got some things we can clean up inside. Um, there was a couple other sacks we should have had uh, if we if we play a little better technique. Uh, there's things in special teams. We turn it over, fumble the ball. Uh, Ray Ray's got to grow up in that regard. He's, he's very talented. Um, you know, we missed an extra point. I mean, there's a lot of things that, that we can improve on. Uh, but that game, as I tell our guys, yesterday's touchdowns don't win today's game. You know, last year's team doesn't win for this year's team. You know, it's all about this game and, and being great this Saturday, uh, trying to find a way to be better in NC State. Last week is is over. Coach, you uh, talked about uh, the championship programs you've been on going back to when you were a player. How does the esprit de corps, the chemistry on this team, compare to some of those uh, teams? Um, are there some <coughs> intangible characteristics that you see in common? Is it primarily just the leadership? Yeah, they like each other. Uh, they, like to, they like to practice. They like to prepare. Uh, they're an easy group to focus. Uh, again, the leadership, I think that's always critical. Uh, the type of people that you have in that, you know, the, the veteran roles on your team uh, is, is probably understated. Uh, but, 
you know, I think they appreciate each other. I think there's a, a genuine love for everybody on this team. Uh, it's one of the things I told them in the very beginning. The key to our season was to love your teammates, you know, serve your teammates. It's, it, you know, we have a great appreciation for a guy like Collins Malden, who's a fifth-year senior, who's our scout team defensive end, who, who gives great effort every single day, every day, uh, and he's not going to play on Saturday. You know, you know, have a great appreciation for that guy. You know, have, have maybe your role is whatever your role is, you know, bloom where you're planted. If you're a special teams guy and that's your role this year, then, man, be the best at whatever it is you're doing. Um, and so I think our guys have a good grasp of that. There's an unselfishness on this team that I like. You know, but there's an edge to these guys, too. You know, they, they get after each other. Uh, they respect each other, but, you know, we'll have a scuffle here and there. They, 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 they compete. Uh, I have to be careful uh, sometimes because if I put the ball down, they're going to they're gonna go. I mean, I, this is a woe group. We don't have to say sick them. Uh, these old boys, we gotta, we got to woe them down a little bit uh, because that's just how they're wired. And, uh, again, that's how we train them uh, all year long. So uh, that's what I like about these guys. Uh, and, and those are some of the characteristics that I think you have to have in place uh, to, to win at a high level. I mean, you got to enjoy the preparation. I mean, you got to love the preparation. You can't just love game day. I mean, you have to be ready to go and understand that, that it's, uh, there's a price to be paid. You got to earn it. Is rushing for 416 as vindicating as it gets for the offensive line? Uh, vindicating? Uh, I don't know. Vindicating, I'm not sure I like that word. Uh, satisfying. Uh, you know, I mean, it's. Uh, uh, it's it's fun to run for 400 something yards. These guys, I don't think they got to vindicate anything. These guys uh, have played well all year. Uh, you know, I think that that was the question coming into the season, and, and my comment at the beginning of the year was, I think by December, the strength of our team is going to be our offensive line, and uh, I, I, it's just awesome to see it play out. Uh, I mean, we got, I mean, we we all those guys can play. Uh, we we have never been in the situation we're in with offensive line, uh, uh, and they've just gotten better and better and better. And these are a bunch of young guys, and uh, we got some other guys that that are going to be you know coming in and joining this group. I'm really, and then they're led by you know Mac and Norton and Gore. Those three guys have done a great job of leading this group. Uh, Jay and what he's done. So uh, uh, you know these guys uh, to be able to have a first of all, it's never happened in the history of Clemson football. You know, to, to have a season where you threw for 400 and something yards in a game and you had a game where you rushed for 400 and something yards. I've never been a part of that, and it's never happened in 100 and something years of Clemson football. Uh, so that's pretty doggone impressive uh, to me. You know, you might think of Georgia Tech rushing for 400 yards, but you're not going to think of them throwing for 400 yards. Most teams aren't built to be able to do both. Uh, and to, to have a football team that has the ability uh, to – to do what we need to do to win a game, whether it's run or throw, is is a lot of fun to coach. Uh, but it all starts with those guys up front. You know their ability to uh, get the plan down each and every week, to protect, to to uh, you know create uh, running lanes, uh, and to see their confidence. And the, the, that to me, you talk about chemistry. Whoever asked that, that group right there, the chemistry of that room and the job that Robbie has done with them, tremendous. DJ Reader's role expanding this week? Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's a great player. Uh, he, he's a starter for us, so, I mean, he's, he's certainly going to uh, continue to work his way in there more and more. I mean, you're talking about an elite guy at his position. Uh, he's, a, he's an NFL guy, uh, a guy that's played a lot of football, a ton of experience. Uh, I mean, we're not going to get worse by having him back, that's for sure.